So this is the last section on the block copolymer uh, application, and then particularly for the nano patterning. And this, I want to introduce something about the Moore's law. So this is a set, this is a new section, which is a nanotechnology application. So now this is a nanotech application using block copolymer. And here I just use a more focus on the microelectronic industry, but one of the growing interests in using control the porosity, uh, using that as a filtration membrane or controlling this uh, different kinds of um, properties. Uh, and I think the, that's what is related to here. So the really the earlier original work is done by this uh, people. This is the people in the Princeton group. And Chris Harrison and the Paul Chaikin with Rig Register. These are the people who who develop understanding this. Okay, so this is a essentially soft pattern. What they when they see the soft pattern, and then this is a, essentially what you see here is you can see the dark phases in the minor. So this is a essentially polybutadiene in the matrix of polystyrene. Right? So you can you can make the polybutadiene domains is a rubbery domain. And they just uh, realize, okay, well, I can make a really thin films of polybutadiene domains on a silicon wafer, and and then what they do is they uh, or ever they they recognize a polybutadiene is CH two CH double bond CH CH two. This is a vulnerable, right? Vulnerable block that you can. Uh, do the audio analysis uh, to cross-link them. And so this is the, the schematic diagram they have, have done. On the silicon wafer uh, or silicon nitride substrate, they make this polystyrene and polybutadiene domains. And this is discrete separate. And then they use the audio analysis. They essentially create this hole. Once they create the hole, and then the, what they call the uh, doing the reactive ion etching, which is a very kind of typically uh, the done procedure to etch things out from the top, you will get this generate this control uh, uh, defined film thicknesses that can be etched into the hard sub substrate. So that's the one one way to kind of taking advantage of. Uh, this fact that uh, polybutadiene can be removed by ozonolysis. Okay, so, and uh, the other method is actually they use a staining the sample. So polybutadiene can be stained by the osmium tetroxide once they are being, uh, being the, being, being cross-linked as a domain they will be much etch resistant, right? So this, when they do the reactive ion etching, they will be much more etch resistant. So the one that has been crossing domain has been survived through, and you can etch through the silicon nitride, and then later that you can you can make this pattern uh, that is, uh, you know, this is where your polybutadiene domain used to be located, right? And this, whereas uh, this is uh, where your polybutadiene domains uh, used to be located. So this is a little different, what they call the positive tone and negative tone in the photoregis industry. But the, the beauty of this is uh, essentially this is a transfer the pattern and 20 nanometer deep holes, and then this is a nanometer scale. And without using the any, many expensive one, you can really make these dot-like patterns, control these the roughnesses, and they start to see that there's an opportunity for making new ways of uh, drawing the pattern on the, uh, the microelectronics industry. The second uh, noticeable effort was done by the Tom Russell in the UMass Amherst, and then he used a polystyrene and a polymethyl methacrylate. Okay, so in these cases, he was using the uh, cylinder. Okay, so, so he, and the, he, the thing that he did is he applied the electric field, make the polymethylmethacrylate stand out, and then, then what he did is he essentially etch PMMA because PMMA is uh, uh, can be uh, can be degraded uh, under the UV light. 
and uh, with a selective uh, dis dissolution, you can make it. And then he was able to grow to some metallic structures over there. So this is all, all about the, uh, about the, this the kind of the information storages. And the later, the, this uh, this idea was taken off, and there is a lot of groups are still working on it. And and we I just talked about self assembly. Right? Self assembly means they kind of con they uh, assembly. And uh, self assembly means uh, if you're looking at the structure, the there are kind of the domains that. This is, uh, for example, the hexagons. Right? This is an orientation of hexagon here. But if you look at the hexagon, the orientation is not, not the same. So you need to figure out where these hexagons uh, domains. It's not a single crystal. The location is not well defined. And so therefore, the it for the microelectronic industry, you need to re uh, get rid of this multi-grain nature. So the, this is a, a typical uh, kind of a self-assembly types of polymers. But now people are interested in what they call the directed. You control self-assembly. It's called the DSA. Okay? So when you do the DSA, you, what used to be the same lamella, but this one has a, essentially has a kind of a uniform orientation. And there are different methods uh, people trying to trying to do. And then one way is trying to essentially uh, confine the lamella formation in the lateral confinement, and so so that they can develop uh, these structures. And and so that what used to be a more entropy dominated. Uh, the method into a, something that is uh, DSA, a direct self-assembly. They are they are talking about conventional DSA versus a selective DSA. This is by the Chuck Black in the I think the he's, he was at IBM, and and uh, you can look at the article more more in detail. But the efforts here is trying to make this size smaller and smaller so that you can really make this uh, the Line features that you can you can write it as small as possible. And the finally, uh, the when when you talk about the microelectronics industry, I have to talk about the Moore's law. And the Moore's law is uh, coming from the Gordon Moore. Okay, so I like to look if you if you just Google the Gordon Moore, he's actually he's a chemist by his own training. But uh, later, he joined the Fairfield uh, Semiconductor Company. And later, he is one of the um, members that who started the uh, Intel. And so he became the Intel CEO for a long time. And what he has is the, the this is actually based on his observation when he was essentially the CEO about the, before he became the CEO of the Intel. He looked at this projection that how uh, this is the y-axis is a number of components. It's the number of essential transistors per unit area and for silicon chips. And this is how things are being developed. And he kind of make a projection that that's the way that how the microelectronics industry projected to develop. And that's the Moore's law uh, that how was kind of suggested based on the essentially Sort of the business model, okay, but that will be a, one of the motivation in the microelectronics industry, uh, with the, in, you know, all kinds of invention of the new photoresist techniques and so on. Now we are, we are, the world is seeing this this uh, this uh, uh, amazing trend, which is a Moore's law, which, which is you put this one in the log scale. Okay? This is a log scale transistor for microprocessor and this is a linear scale and this is what, what we see now right? this is almost like a, so this one means this is an exponential exponential growth of the, uh, the, the numbers of transistor and the, the key point is now when these days you need to have a features as a uh, the 
it's called the lithography if the feature size is as small as 5 nanometer this is something that uh, quite is a challenging so a lot of com competing technologies are being used and uh, for a short while people uh, consider this one using the DSA technique to make this one happen but now uh, the what is called the ele extreme UV uh, lithography and this is uh, going to take off and uh, make it into the uh, making uh, trying to make a uh, patterns for making more transistor uh, populated on the same spaces to make it in the micro electronic industry. So this is uh, what currently right now the EUV technique is uh, its own uh, big technique. It, this is a picture of the Gordon Moore uh, with the, I guess the, this all these uh, microelectronics uh, pictures in the background, and he's the he's the one of the really the pioneer who make this all this information and technology possible because without the better computer chips faster computer chips um, they can you cannot imagine the, all the information that we process is possible